Hello everyone, it's Juliet here at Spoil Rotten Beads and today I am going to show you how to make a lovely festive make because we're all getting into the Christmas spirit here at Spoil Rotten. It is a lovely snowflake. Here it is. It was designed by our shop manager Vivian. It uses gem duo beads and super duo beads and it's really fun to make, very easy. Um, and what's wonderful about it is it's three dimensional. So if I turn it on its side, you see that it's actually got three dimensions to it. So it's a very, very pretty design and you can make it into a pendant as we have done here. Another colorway to show you there. That uses one of the lovely backlit um, gem duo colors. Um, it looks lovely as a simple pendant for Christmas. It also looks great as a pair of earrings. There we go. Um, or on a bag charm or a bookmark, or even you could use them um, when you're wrapping your Christmas presents. You could pop one of these on the front of your Christmas presents or your Christmas cards as well. So really fun and easy to make. We don't use many beads, very versatile. As I say, it was designed by Vivian here at Spoil Rotten Beads and there is a free pattern that you can download from our website, www.spoilrottenbeads.co.uk. So here are the beautiful snowflake decorations that Vivian designed for us at Spoilt Rotten Beads and what I love about these is that they are three-dimensional so the super duos on them flick flack as you can see sort of I call it flick flacking anyway they go side to side and they have this wonderful three-dimensional shape so they're very very pretty and and lovely to hang on your Christmas tree um, or to make into earrings or as we have done here with this lovely backlit blue one here we've made a lovely Christmassy pendant so they're a very versatile little design um, as I say you'll really have fun making them it's great that they have this three-dimensional quality to them and they're really easy to make and they don't use an awful lot of beads as well so they're quite um, economical to make as well so I'm just going to talk you through making these now and then we'd love it if you shared your makes with us on our Facebook page or our YouTube channel and show us what you do with this design. Okay, so to make one of these lovely snowflakes, you're gonna need the following. You will need some gem duo beads, and I'm using these lovely backlit gem duos here, and the color that I'm using is called backlit uranium, and it has got this wonderful glow that comes from inside the bead. You'll see it's so pretty. I think it's gonna make a lovely snowflake. You'll also need some super duo beads, and I am using super duos in, um, in Crystal Labrador, which have a lovely sparkle to them as well. You'll need a size 10 beading needle, and you'll need some beading thread, and I'm gonna be using Dura thread today. So the first thing you need to do is to thread up your needle with around about half a metre or so of your beading thread. And you want to start off by threading on five of the Gem Duo beads. And you do need to make sure that they're all facing the same way. So um, as you can see, I'm lining my beads up here and threading them all on the same way. So I'm making sure that they're all facing the same way. So you can see the backlit side and then the, the plain flat side to those gem duos. And you need to thread on five of them. So there's my five beads now threaded on. There we go. And I'm gonna take those down to the end of my thread. There we go. Take those down to the end of my thread. There's the end of my thread, there we go. So move all that back into shot, get those gem duos out of the way because we don't need those for a while now. And then what I'm gonna do is I'm actually gonna sew back through all five of those beads. So I'm sewing back through all five beads now. And they'll kind of flick flack like this, but don't worry, as soon as you get them around in a circle, they will sit really nicely. So I've sewed back through them all, and you can see I've brought them um, up together so that they sit in a circle. And now this is my tail of thread here, and what I'm going to do is take my tail of thread and knot it around my working thread like so. Just tied like a nice secure knot there. And I'm going to tie another knot now, so I'm going to tie a double knot so that it's really nice and secure. So 
I'm going once through my loop and I'm going to go another time through my loop and pull this knot tight and it will just sit between those two gem duo beads there I'm pulling it really nice and tight there we go and you can see these gem duos just look so pretty with that backlit effect they're really lovely now what I'm going to do is I'm going to step up through the empty hole in the gem duo bead that I am just exiting And now I'm going to put two super duo beads in between these two gem duos. So I'm picking up two super duos and going through the empty hole in the next gem duo bead. Like so. And I'm going to do that again. And I'm going to work all the way around my circle, adding in those two super duos in between each of the gem duos like so. So I'm going to come back to you when I've done that. Okay, so I've gone all the way around my circle um, and I'm exiting from this gem duo here and I haven't pulled everything really tight because if you do pull everything really tight, this is what will happen. So I'm going to pull it tight so you can see. It will kind of start to bunch up like that and you don't want it to do that. So don't worry that it's a little bit loose because when you stitch your two snowflakes together, you'll find the whole piece will stiffen up an awful lot and that's when you get this kind of flick flack um, design um, cool effect really. So I'm now coming out of this um, gem duo here. I'm gonna stitch through the first two super duos that I added. And step up through the empty hole in that gem, that super duo that I am exiting. And now what we're going to do is we're going to put another super duo in between these two super duos here. So I'm picking up a super duo and going through the next super duo there. And pull that through. And you see it sits neatly in between those two super duos. And now what we want to do is go back through those two super duos one more time. So I'm going to go back through those two super duos. And now back through the next gem duo and the next two super duos in the circle. So back through the gem duo and the next two super duos in the circle and we're going to repeat that process so i'm going to step up through the empty hole in that super duo that i was exiting pick up another super duo bead and go through the next super duo and then back through those two super duo beads there. And it does all feel a little bit kind of floppy and loose at this stage, but don't worry about that because it will really stiffen up as you bead and also as you join your two snowflakes together. So I'm gonna come back to you when I have gone all the way around the circle and added in these extra super duos okay, there. So I've gone all the way around my circle and I've finished this snowflake now and you'll see it's actually still quite loose. So don't, but don't worry about that. It feels a bit concerning, but once you've made your other snowflake and you join them together, it does really stiffen the whole piece up. So what I'm gonna do now is just trim off my tail of thread and I'm gonna finish off my thread here on this snowflake. So I've come out between the two super duos here. Um, and I'm actually just gonna stitch through that super duo so that I come out between super duo and a gem duo. And I'm gonna step up through the super duo and I'm gonna finish off my thread in between these super duos here. And it's quite important to do that because when you come to join your two snowflakes together, you do need to be able to pass through all of the beads in the lower holes again. So you don't want to finish off your thread between gem duos and super duos because you don't want a knot there blocking your way. So I'm gonna finish off up here. So I'm just hooking down between two of my beads. Make a little loop 
go through my loop and pull tight. I'm going to do that again, make that loop, go through my loop and pull tight. So I'm just going to pull that knot inside between, inside that super duo there. Pull and I'm just going to tie another knot. Again, I've hooked down between, I'm um, under the thread between two beads, created a loop and tie a knot. I'll do that again. I like to be nice and secure. There we go. And pull that knot inside the next bead. And there we go. So now I can trim off this tail of thread. And what I'm going to do is repeat that whole process again and make another one of these components. And then I'm going to come back to you and show you how to join them both together. Okay, so I've created my second snowflake and I'm ready to join the two together now. And my thread, ooh, my needle is exiting from a gem duo bead. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to pop both of my components together but I'm going to put them together so that I have got the gem duos from one snowflake matching up with the super duos from the other snowflake. So it's sort of, if I turn it on its air, on its side, you can see that you can see the, the, gem duo, the super duos on the top here and the super duos from the bottom component either side of them. So I'm, it, I'm not doing that. I'm doing that so that it's alternated, if that makes sense. And if I turn it on its side, hopefully you can see that as well. So I've got, I'm coming out of this gem duo here and opposite me now are the super duos from the other component. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna stitch through the super duos on, from the other component. So I'm exiting from a gem duo on one component and going through the lower holes of the two super duos on the other component. And this is how we're gonna join them together. And that is what will create that flick flack effect. So it's really tricky to do this on camera because I kind of wanna bring it up so I can see what I'm doing, but then you won't be able to see what I'm doing. So I'm gonna go through the super duo beads on the other component and if you have tricky trouble getting your needle through then just go through one bead at a time like I am here one and through the next one there we go so my these together you can see how I'm exiting from this gem duo going through these two super duos and then I'm now going to go back through that gem duo that I just exited I'm trying to kind of keep it all loose so you guys can see all, all I'm doing is joining up the gem duo on one component with the super duos on another component and pulling tight and you can see that they're kind of beginning to flick flack already so I've gone back through that gem duo I'm now going to go through the next two super duos on the same component and I'm going to repeat that process so I'm now exiting the super duos on one component and I'm going to go through just the gem duo on the other component Pull tight and back through those super duos again. Just make sure that your thread doesn't get caught around any of your super duos as you pull it all together. So now I'm going through the gem duo on this component and then through the super duos on the other component. Get my thread in a tangle there, that's no good. There we go. And 
and back through that gem duo again. So that is what's creating this flick flack approach. I'm actually just going to go through those two super duos as well. So that's where I need to end up. So you can see now it's beginning to flick flack. So I'm just going to go all the way around my piece and you can see how this side where I've started is already kind of a lot stiffer um, and sitting up nicely whereas this side that I haven't gone through yet is still got that movement in it. So I'm going to go all the way through it um, to, so I join up with where I started from and then I'm going to finish off my thread and I'm going to come back to you and show you what it looks like. Okay, so I've gone through all of my beads and joined my two components up together and you can see how it's now flick flacking and it's also nice and stiff as well. So it really does make a difference when you do that. So I'm exiting from a, um, a set of super duos here and I'm just going to finish off my thread by hooking down between a couple of beads so that I get an a loop and I've gone through the loop and that creates the knot which I can then pull tight and repeat that and then pull that knot inside that next bead which is a gem duo repeat it one more time I like to be nice and secure there we go and pull that knot inside the next bead which is a super duo And that's now, now nice and secure and I can now use my little scissors to trim off my tail of thread. And there is my beautiful snowflake component. So if I want to make it into a pendant at this stage, I can just take one of our 7mm silver plated open jump rings and slip that through the hole on one of the super duo beads. It goes through nice and easily. So you can very quickly make these into a pendant. They're very, very pretty, but I think they'll look lovely hanging on the Christmas tree as well, or even as a pair of earrings, or maybe on a bookmark or a bag charm. Very, very festive. Have lots of fun making them. Don't forget to head over to our website where you can download that free pattern, www.spoiltrottenbeads.co.uk. Thank you for watching. Bye-bye.